Okay, I think we can begin the meeting. Yes. Okay. Okay, I would like to call the meeting to order. It is 7.05. Would you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the Board of Education accepts the minutes of the Board of Education meetings held on April 14 and April 20th, 2021, as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Is read. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Smith. Are there any questions or comments? No, Mrs. O'Hagan, I'm not sure if you're aware, but your camera is off. You may want to try to turn it back on again. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi. <laughs> now your sound is off. <laughs> Just, yep. Okay, it said the hosted me. It's never mind. <laughs> Motion carries. <laughs> Rocky start, but okay. The Board of Education acknowledges receipt of the Treasurer's report for the month of March as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Ms. Reed. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Smith. Are there any questions? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, shall I go ahead, uh, Dr. Kami, or do you have anything to say before I begin? You're muted, yeah. I have a few things to say, and then we were gonna do the budget, uh, the short right. budget. Okay, I wasn't sure if you were gonna go first. Um, so just a few things. Um, one, um, really proud to share with our community that the high school was once again on the US News and World Report best high schools list. Not only were we on that list, but we moved up in ranking from last year to this year. So um, if you know anything about us, we won't stop till we're number one on the list. Um, and so we're really proud um, of that. Um, I want to share that um, uh, we are going to be the subject of a full 30 minute Metro Focus episode on WNET. Um, so that originally will air on um, the local PBS stations, WLIW, WLIW WNET, and NJTV, um, with the possibility that it will air in other parts of the country. Uh, so it is, uh, originally it was filmed prior to the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and everything shut down and um, as did their editors. Uh, so recently we did um, a little bit more uh, on Zoom and they are in the process of editing. My understanding is that it will be airing at the end of this month. And as soon as we know the date, we will let the community know. But that is, um, I don't know, that's something I'm pretty proud of. Um, uh, vaccines, um, the, the high school parents should have received um, information. There are two efforts underway. One is through Mount Sinai, South Nassau, and the other is through Nassau County at Nassau Community College. Um, they are um, vaccines for um, high school students ages 16 through 18. Um, you might have heard that today uh, Pfizer was approved to, for 11 and up. And so my guess is that the county um, and, and uh, Mount Sinai will also be opening that up. Um, but we are sending that information out to parents um, for them to obviously make the decision on their own. Um, but we wanted to make sure that our families had access. Um, we're really proud of um, um, another group of young people from our high school. Um, so there's a very strong collaboration with PBS and our school district, um, in part because I am um, the chair of their Educational Telecommunications Service Committee, um, but really because they love us. And once they had the opportunity to 
um, meet our students and see our program, um, I get calls from them now um, I, I, on, a, on, a, on a fairly frequent basis um, asking us if we have students who are willing to participate in fill in the blank. And so um, last year they started a, a, youth, co a youth collective um, summit and uh, we had a, a number of um, students who participated in that. That was in person. It was literally um, uh, less than a week before the pandemic shut everything down. Um, this year we had um, four Baldwinites who participated, not only participated, they led the Youth Collective Summit. Um, Ashley Ganesh, Kiara Kamina, Nicolette Carrion, and Courtney Bob. Um, there, we have shared the videos of them, um, and I was recently at a meeting with other um, other uh, LIW uh, members, and uh, they literally went on for ten minutes about our kids. So um, I wasn't going to stop them, um, but they should really be proud. Um, last couple things. One is um, you might have seen on um, NBC or PIX a story about a uh, hello neighbor. And just to, to illustrate uh, how this really gets out there, I got a text from a friend. She was a friend since I'm three years old and I'm not gonna tell you how many decades ago that is, um, but from three years old and she texted me and said, and this is a quote, she said, I saw the story um, about, uh, about your students on NBC, she said, your students, are amazing. She didn't say you look good or you know <laughs> you're doing a great. She said your students are amazing, and so you know if and she's she doesn't live locally. Um, so to 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 hear that is really just a really really proud moment. And by the way, they were amazing. So if you did not get a chance to see that news story, um, it's on our website. If you did not get to see the um, their, their displays, you can't call them posters because they're mesh, um, they're mesh posters, but they're like three feet by two feet. Um, they are amazing. Um, and it was our high school AP students who worked with our kids at Brookside, um, our second graders at Brookside. And it, the, what they worked on, what they talked about uh, was what are your hopes and dreams for the future? Um, sadly, a lot of it was pandemic related. Um, but um, those kids were amazing. So uh, I wanna bring that to your attention. Um, and the last is, um, I know that um, particularly this group, you're all wondering about graduation, moving up and end of year celebrations. Um, I just wanna share with everyone, this is not on the back burner, it is on the front burner. Um, we, are, we are hoping, we know that the governor is changing regulations as of May 19th. So we're awaiting some of those changes. I will tell you that the emphasis, just so you know, the emphasis is on in-person moving ups and graduations. The issues are related to, um, um, bless you. Um, the issues are related to um, size, numbers of people, um, which is why we're trying to do it outdoors. And, um, in the event of rain, what do you do? And so just to give you a sense, it is um, seven sound systems, it's seven stages, it's enough chairs for thousands of people, um, and um, we will be limiting tickets to um, two tickets per family because of the size restrictions. Um, but the other part of this is what is different from last year to this year. Um, there are Regents exams on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that last week. Um, and so we have uh, Thursday and Friday to work with. And that is what we're working on. Um, we're very close to a finalized plan. We don't want to send anything out prematurely, but just know that we are working on an in-person, outdoor celebration um, for all of our kids and families. Um, so that's it for me. Um, I will turn it back over to you, Mrs. O'Hagan, and I'm gonna ask Mr. Robinson to queue up his slides. This is not one of our official budget presentations, but we decided that we would take the opportunity on the last monthly meeting before the vote 
to run through a very brief um, number of the slides, uh, just as kind of a reminder. Um, okay, next slide. Okay, we start as we always do, and I, I am going to uh, just replicate some of what Dr. Kami said. We are so proud of the programs and the students that we have in our high school. Um, we have uh, 80 AP scholars. We have 97% uh, graduation rate in 2020. Um, we have, we're, as Dr. Kami mentioned, we're back on the list of best high schools uh, from US News uh, and World Report. Uh, an 8% increase in recipients of advanced regents diploma, even despite all of the challenges that, that our students have faced this year. So we are very, very proud of our students and our program. Uh, here again is a comparison of our graduation rate with the graduation rates around the state and in Nassau and Suffolk County. And you can see that Baldwin High School with a 97% graduation rate, how it compares with the rest of New York State, which is at 85%. And we are particularly proud of the fact that our students, even our students who are economically disadvantaged, we have a 93% graduation rate. Uh, so we are, we are really uh, feel strongly that we're doing the right thing and that our students are, are showing it. So this is uh, something that we try to point out every year. Uh, it is a good indication that the community is getting a great return on their tax dollars. Um, you can see how we compare to the highest spending school district in Nassau County. And you can see that Baldwin as ever is below the average in Nassau County for spending per pupil. So all of the wonderful accomplishments that we have are touting uh, is all being uh, done with a pretty modest budget. And I think the, okay, the real uh, story here and the important story is that what you see on the surface is not necessarily the whole story. It's what you don't see that matters. And I think at this point, I will turn it over to Mrs. Coles. Good evening, Sorry. everybody. Um, okay, so uh, on this slide, you see some of the headlines that um, I, I'm sure that you've seen and that you've heard. But again, if you refer back to the previous slide, it's what is below the surface that is often the real story. So the real financial impact lies below the, sur the surface. Um, Mr. DiNapoli has, has even said that um, Governor Cuomo's uh, budget is, is, may not be sustainable, what, what has been proposed. And this is a very, very important slide. This shows how our budget is broken down. And as it always should be, uh, over 75% of the budget goes to the programs and directly to the kids. 13% to capital and 11.68 to administration, not administrators, administration. So Baldwin's property tax cap for the 2021-2022 school year will be 1.74%. And of course that is compliant with the New York state tax levy cap legislation. So, even though we don't like this slide, we, we do have to uh, put it up there. Rules for contingency budget should the budget not be passed. So if the budget is defeated twice, pursuant to New York State tax cap legislation, there can be no increase in the tax levy, 0%. So the limitations of a contingent budget say that the tax levy would have to be zero, 
no capital expenses, so no capital projects at all could be done, no equipment purchases, and no community use of facilities. So, you know, the local groups, uh, Eagles, PAL, nobody would be able to use any of the facilities. And if there is a contingent budget, there needs to be a reduction of 2.454636 million dollars. And that, that is more than the difference, but the reason for that is because there can be no capital projects on a contingency budget and the capital projects that were proposed it exceed the amount. So it brings it up to that uh, amount that was on the previous slide. I'm sorry, it's no longer in front of us. So important information on the budget vote and election. We wanna ensure success for every student the budget vote is Tuesday, May 18th, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. And it is very important to note that there is a location change. This will not be at the high school. This will be at the district office on Hastings. And there will be uh, parking provided not only on Hastings, but in the parking lot off of Milburn. Now, absentee ballots. They are due to the district clerk on or before May 18th, before 5 p.m. For more information, please contact the district clerk. Uh, you see the phone number there as well as the email address. Absentee ballot request must be received by the district clerk no later than May 11th, 2021 by 4.30 p.m. if the ballot is to be mailed to the voter and the day before the election, Monday, May 17th, 2021, by 4.30 p.m. if the application is to be dropped off and the ballot is to be picked up in person by the voter. Can I just uh, interrupt for one second, Mrs. Cools, uh, because obviously it's no law, May 11th has, has passed. Um, if you want to vote by absentee ballot, you have to come to the district office to pick up the ballot and it has to be returned by um, 5 p.m. May 18th. Right. Okay, next slide. Um, if you have any questions, contact um, the district office, Dr. Cami, uh, or any of her administrators, and we will make sure that you get your questions answered. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, Mrs. Pulsa. Now I'll turn the meeting back to Dr. Cami for the presentation of student honorees. Thank you. So this is one of, am I muted? No, I'm good. Um, <laughs> this is one of our favorite nights of the year uh, because we get to put our students front and center. Um, obviously, this has been a really challenging year and a quarter. Um, there is no question about that. So the students that we are um, honoring tonight um, really deserve uh, like a clap and a half because um, not only are they outstanding kids and they've done amazing work um, and, and been amazing citizens, but they've done it in the most difficult time in all of our lifetimes. Um, so tonight um, I have the pleasure of um, presiding over um, what is the probably the most joyous, um, well, one of the most joyous um, evenings in the in the district. Um, I am going to um, just share that um, just a just a point of information. Um, we are going to make sure that we get group photos in our buildings um, so that we have it to last forever. Um, for the purpose of the top 10 students, in addition to the slides that you will see, we are asking our students to turn on their cameras. Um, and the top 10 students will be elevated to panelists so we can see them um, and to stay on so that in the end, we can see all of our top 10 um, kids all together. So with that, I am going to um, turn it over um, to um, the um, presentation of the Spelling Bee winners. Mr. DiNapoli.
just so the community knows, it might take us a minute or two because we're raising people up and and putting them down. Thank you, Dr. Kami and Board of Education. The Scripps National Spelling Bee provides all participants the opportunity to further extend their spelling, increase their vocabularies, learn concepts, and develop correct English usage that will help them throughout their lives. This year's winners experienced a new type of spelling bee that inc incorporated both traditional practices and new components. And after multiple rounds of competition, each elementary school and the middle school culminated with a spelling bee champion. And tonight, I am extremely proud to have the opportunity to celebrate the district spelling bee champions. So please join us in congratulating Bryce Fiorhiri, spelling bee champion of Brookside Elementary School, Mia Bryant, spelling bee champion of Lennox Elementary School, Alicia Coger, spelling bee champion of Meadow Elementary School. Christine Adai, Spelling Bee Champion of Plaza Elementary School. Ryan Seifert Jr., Spelling Bee Champion of Steele Elementary School. And Jace Owens, Spelling Bee Champion of Baldwin Middle School. Again, congratulations to all 2021 Scripps National Spelling Bee participants and to our 2021 District Spelling Bee Champions. We commend all of you for your hard work and dedication to challenge yourselves as learners. And I am now happy to introduce Dr. Tessa, principal of Baldwin High School. Good evening, good evening, everyone, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Kami, District Office Administrators, staff, students, and parents. It is my pleasure to speak to you first tonight about the top 10 members of the class of 2021. They truly are leaders of their class and not just those with the highest averages. Overall, this is a truly amazing class where all is of deserving to be honored this evening. They have had by far the most tumultuous and taxing end to their high school career that any class has had. They are not just the class of 2021, but also the class of resilience. For our top 10, your accomplishes, accomplishments make us all proud, hopeful, and confident that the future of our world will soar. So here is our top 10, starting with number 10, Christopher Costello. So you can see here, Christopher has earned pretty much every academic distinction you can get from multiple honor societies, AP Scholar with Distinction, High Honor Roll, all while involved in multiple clubs and activities such as art club, cycling, marching band, pep band, being the treasurer of Wind Symphony, and Retro Gaming Club. He is civic minded as well as cares deeply about volunteering for both school and outside causes, ranging from volunteering at ninth grade orientation to children's hospitals to food and toy drives. But here's what Chris's teachers say about him. Chris is the most consistently responsible student I have ever had. He has impeccable habits, is sharply focused and thoughtful. He is the true example of a lifelong learner. He is self-motivated to improve as a student and as a person, and will seek answers to questions that will help him to be a better student and member of his community. Another teacher said, during class discussions, he continually impresses me with his ability to analyze information presented to him and draw original and insightful conclusions. Most impressive is Chris's ability to discuss and draw conclusions about difficult and controversial material. Chris is the genuine example of a team player. He takes this quality with him through his involvement in many of the school's clubs. As he is fond of building things, he works with the stage crew to build sets, which highlights his problem-solving skills 
and ability to work with a team. Congratulations, Chris. Chris, I'm gonna ask you to just turn your video off till we get to the end so that each student can, can be seen. Thank you. Next at number nine, we have Sakil Ruff. Sakil also has earned pretty much every academic distinction as well. Multiple honor societies, high honor roll, AP scholar with distinction. I also got to know Sakil through the principal's leadership group and he was instrumental in helping create the Bruins principles and creating our student video at the beginning of the year. Sakil's diligence and devoted work ethic have awarded him with distinct honors of number nine in his graduating class, AP capstone diploma, AP scholar with distinction and membership into the National Honor Society. He is a leader in all respects from AIDS peer educators to varsity lacrosse, golden wave and so much more. Sakil is most proud of his motivation, time management, and desire for self-improvement. He has a strong desire to be the best he can be in all capacities. To that end, Sakil credits his AP seminar class with bringing out his best character traits as success in the course requires superior leadership and teamwork skills, along with exceptional public speaking practices. His teachers say, Sakil grew into a personable and responsible young man over the years with a strong foundation in mathematics. He is eager to learn and demonstrates exceptional skills. He places great emphasis on academics and expresses an aspiration to explore education in the future. As a teacher, I look forward to teaching Sakil's class every day because of his high level of enthusiasm and his willingness to approach even the most difficult activities. Sakil has not only the academic knowledge to succeed in any class, but also always comes to class with an optimistic outlook. There is not a single topic that was covered in class where he thought he could not do it. When we were in the forces unit, I showed students how to calculate the acceleration in a difficult problem. Most of the class was lost and getting frustrated, but not Sakil. Throughout the entire lesson, he just smiled and went along with it. He asked amazing questions during the lesson and though he was having difficulties, he persevered through it all, doing well on the exam. And as a teacher, I looked forward to teaching Sakil's class every day because of his high level of enthusiasm and willingness to approach even the most difficult activities. I was continually impressed by his positive attitude and more importantly, his willingness to support others. Congratulations, Sakil, number nine. Next, we have number eight, Danielle Palmer. Danielle has also earned every honor possible, multiple honor societies, high honor roll, AP scholar, NISMA high silver award, silver medal in French, to name a few. Danielle also served on the principal's leadership group as well. And like Sakil, she led the group in developing the Bruins principles and creating our video to reopen the school year. Dr. Tester, can we wait until um, Danielle comes on camera? Oh. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Hi, Danielle. She too has earned the AP capstone diploma on top of being a violinist, soccer player, and referee, lifeguard, and sports night participant. She volunteers her time to multiple causes, both in school and out of school. Here's what Danielle's teachers say about her. On day one, when I met Danielle, she struck me as a young lady who gave nothing less than her best. She had her moments of doubt and hesitation and was not afraid to voice it, but she worked through her confusion and struggles every time. She has heart and ambition and an impressive work ethic that paid off. She is highly motivated, loves a good academic challenge, i.e. challenging exams, highly competitive on and off the field, has a thirst for knowledge, and a great sense of humor. Another teacher said, in all my years at this position, I've had few students who could match the intellectualism and dedication of Danielle Palmer. Danielle is articulate, thoughtful, mature, witty, civic-minded, athletic, and honest. Suffice it to say that she is one of the most gifted and well-rounded students I have ever yet taught. And she represents the best values of our community and the country as a whole. 
Another teacher said, perhaps what I remember most was Danielle's intellectual curiosity and her capacity to question knowledge and to wonder about how we know what we know. And lastly, another teacher said, Danielle has long since become one of my most valued students, as well as a role model for her peers. Mm -hmm. I've admired the contributions she has made during her high school career and her attitude towards others and herself. Danielle has a self-awareness that is imbued with her with outstanding personal qualities of integrity, charm, sensitivity, and leadership. Her personal style presents a unique combination of maturity and emotional stability well beyond her years. Congratulations, Danielle. Number eight. Next at number seven, we have Matthew Olmedo. Matthew is a multiple honor societies as well as part of the STEM and Engineering Academy. An AP scholar with honors and a member of the high honor roll. He is also an athlete, a bowler, baseball team captain, and robotics enthusiast. He volunteers as his church as a teacher, mentee, and choir member. Here is what Matthew's teachers say about him. Matthew is a tremendous intellect, a very fine athlete, and a wonderful musician and the type of student I look forward to seeing every day. Matt has spent the past three years in our honors level wind symphony playing alto saxophone in a terrific ensemble on some gr a great repertoire. This year, he agreed to play baritone saxophone and fill an important role, important hole, even if it wasn't his first choice. This is just one example of his selfless, dedicated approach. Another teacher says, Matthew has a unique aptitude in mathematics. His work and participation displays great understanding and application of content that appears to come naturally to him. He is a critical thinker who enjoys a challenge. Another teacher said, in every instance, both in class and outside of it, Matthew demonstrates a calm, collected manner of behavior. Matthew makes great connections with others. Right away, he showed great enthusiasm and kindness when talking with teachers and peers. And lastly, another teacher said, what impressed me most about this achievement was hearing Matthew's daily school routine. He would go to school, get home around 5.30 from practice, and then spend the next five to six hours studying and getting homework done. His course load for his senior year consists of mostly AP and dual enrollment college classes. Outside of the classroom, you can find Matthew bowling, playing baseball, or at his church helping out. Congratulations, Matthew, number seven in the class of 2021. Next at number six, we have Lila Ariste. Lila? Okay. Lila is a member of multiple honor societies, an AP scholar with distinction, high honor roll with distinction, a silver medalist on the National French exam, and has earned the AP Capstone Seminar and Research Certificate. As a Medical Academy student, she has participated in multiple shadow days, both at Mercy Hospital and LIJ Valley Street. She is an athlete, she acts, she tutors, and has a passion for medicine. She has spent time volunteering for many causes and has gotten hands-on experience in hospitals. Hmm. Here's what Lila's teachers say about her. Lila, Lila is a humble and gifted young woman. She embodies the very qualities we all try to encourage and nurture in the youth of today. An enthusiasm for learning, social consciousness, and a moral character beyond reproach. Another teacher said, Lila has given nothing but the best in this course, never hesitating to voice her questions or areas of struggle. She embodies the qualities that will lead her towards great things. Another teacher said, Lila is one of the most interesting, mature, and thoughtful young people I have ever met. In her precocious, uh, in her precocious intellect and mature ability to articulate complex ideas, 
she exhibits the best values and ideals of the Baldwin community and of America itself. Lastly, another teacher said, she embodies the concept of a scholar athlete, is affable and enthusiastic, and held in high esteem by both teachers and her peers. Her impressive record of service to the Baldwin community is probably the most extensive and admirable I have ever encountered. And what is most admirable about Lila is that amidst all of her involvements, she is not a student who is just concerned about her own personal accomplishments. She is a concerned citizen committed to making the world a better place, always finding time to help where needed. Congratulations, number six in the class, Lila. Next at number five, Jacob Isaac. Jacob truly defines what it means to be a scholar. Multiple honor societies, AP scholar, high honor roll with distinction, seal of biliteracy, all county musician, Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony Award, College Board National African American recognized scholar. He has also earned his AP capstone diploma. His clubs and activities include chess, jazz band, acting, model UN and mock trial, a cappella, mathletes and sign language. He is in both the superintendent's advisory board and the principal's leadership group. He has volunteered his time to tutor students at the library, and he is a student mentor and a musician at various community events. Here's what Jacob's teachers say about him. Jacob is deeply intelligent, mature, and civic-minded, a truly upstanding and honest young man. He is by far a very engaging student with an inquisitive mind. Jacob exhibits great interest and talent in mathematics, and he's always eager to communicate his thoughts, ideas, and questions to others. He asked me this year if there was any math books that I can recommend for him to read, and I was very happy to oblige. Another teacher said, Jacob's ability to be thoughtful and critically analyze information made his presence in the classroom incalculable. I've never met a student with an appetite for reading like Jacob. I came to realize that even a casual reference to a piece of literature would encourage Jacob to add it to his reading list. The next day, the book or novel would be in his bag. Another teacher said, his sense of rhythm and pitch has always been terrific, and he is genuinely a student of music. Jacob is always listening to great music, be it classical or jazz. He grasps all the music theory concepts, is a strong improviser, and has truly mastered the intellectual aspects of music. Congratulations, Jacob, number five. At number four, we have Phoebe Socking. Phoebe has excelled in all areas, being a member of multiple honor societies, AP Scholar with Honors, High Honor Roll with Distinction, and has earned as well her AP Capstone Diploma. She is an incredible musician, earning Gold Award at NISMA. As a Medical Academy student, she completed a medical internship with Northwell Health and earned their Career Development Certificate. She is active in our school, a member of the Environmental Club, Key Club, Mercy Medical Explorers, and Sign Language Club. She is an athlete, a Science Olympiad, and a participant in sports night. She volunteers her time for an incredible amount of causes, from beach cleanup, soup kitchens, tutoring, attending breast cancer walks, mentoring AP seminar students, and a member of the Baldwin Youth Civic Association. Here's what Phoebe's teachers say about her. Phoebe is a kind, determined, and dedicated young woman. She is not afraid to tackle a challenge or put forth the hard work necessary for success. I am continually impressed with Phoebe's maturity, focus, and persistence. Another, another teacher said, an absolute pleasure and exemplary student who demonstrates the highest levels of academic rigor by her work and effort. Lastly, another teacher said, she is unassumingly quiet, self-motivated, and competitive, diligent, and enjoys learning, and is steadfast and reliable. 
Her skill set goes beyond that of an average high school student. She is not content to succeed alone because she motivates others and works well collaboratively to ensure the success of all involved. Congratulations to Phoebe, number four in her class. At number three, we have Moni Sade Adarimi. Moni, you there? Hello? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Moni is a member of multiple honor societies, an AP scholar with distinction, high honor roll, outstanding achievement in Spanish, and has earned the AP capstone diploma. She is a recipient of the Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award, and Moni has completed an internship at LIJ Hospital in Valley Stream and is an active participant in the Medical Academy, Spark Challenges, and Shadow Days. She's very involved in clubs, from Art for Charity, Key Club, Medical Explorers, Model UN, Phoenix Magazine, and is an officer for the National Honor Society. She volunteers her time at various school and community events, such as the Ninth Grade Orientation, Blood Drives, and we get to hear Moni on the announcements almost every day. She does a great job. Here's what Moni's teachers say about her. I was Moni's mentor during her freshman and sophomore years. When we would meet, it was as if I was talking with a peer. She is an incredibly mature high school student. There were times when we met during our mentoring sessions that she wanted to view surgeries online or watch the show Dr. Pimple Popper. I knew that I knew then that she was destined for a future in medicine. She was a shy girl who blossomed into a confident young woman who will be incredibly successful because of her ambition and drive. Another teacher said, Moni is a warm, respectable young woman who accepts her responsibilities as a student with energy and enthusiasm. She was always prepared for class and demonstrated the capacity and desire to communicate and to work well with others. In addition, she was the most conscientious, conscientious, dependable, and motivated and cooperative student that I've ever had. Another teacher said, I've had the pleasure of working with Moni this year in virtual enterprise. This was a different type of class for Moni, and she really thrived working with a team to complete finance projects. Watching Moni in VE really shows how she's able to adapt her talents and work ethic across the board. She always has a positive attitude and outlook on whatever she explores. We will miss her next year. Another teacher said, unique, she reads textbooks for enjoyment, is highly self-motivated and self-competitive. She enjoys learning, enjoys adult company and conversation, and is mature behind her years. Lastly, another teacher said, perhaps what I remember most was Moni's intellectual curiosity and her capacity to question knowledge and to wonder about how we know what we know. For her AP research topic, I still remember counseling her and asking her how she would be able to add to such extensive body of knowledge. And Moni responded, all the research on autism is quantitative. I want to do a study that gives those with autism a voice. Congratulations, Moni, number three in her class. And at number two, our salutatorian of the class of 2021, Ashley Ganesh. Ashley is truly a leader of leaders. And that was definitely true with the principal's leadership group. I am amazed as to how much she is able to take on and still accomplish everything with tremendous skill. It is not surprising that she too has earned an AP capstone diploma and is a member of multiple honor societies is an AP scholar with distinction. Law is her thing, spending time at Columbia University in the summer 
and at Stanford. Throughout her high school years, Ashley has been very active and has taken advantage of opportunities presented to her. She's a board member for Sports Night, a decades old spirit competition and major commitment here at Baldwin High School. She is a member of the book club, SAD, yearbook, key club president, mock trial club, mathletes, and FBLA. And in each organization holds an important leadership position. She is a natural leader and displays her leadership in her work ethic and positive attitude. Ashley is always a dedicated athlete playing field hockey and lacrosse each year. Academically, Ashley has been a very strong student all throughout high school and will leave here ready for college. She has taken AP and honors courses each year and will have taken 12 AP courses by the time she graduates and has consistently been on the high honor roll. She volunteers an impressive amount of causes from being on the Erase Racism Student Task Force, WNET Youth Collective Advisory Board, and a Cohen Strong Anti-Bullying Ambassador, and so much more. Here's what Ashley's teachers say about her. Ashley is a very motivated and studious young lady who tackles the discipline of mathematics head on. Another teacher said, Ashley was in my, my, my student in grades seven, nine, and 10. While she was always a great student, I was also able to see her grow from a shy seventh grader into a confident young woman who not only has spent a ton of time working to make herself a top student, but also puts time in to help younger peers on a daily basis. Another teacher said, she was an officer in Key Club with me. Key Club and I could never have accomplished what we had this year without her. She is an organized, creative, and motivated beyond words. Lastly, another teacher said, she enjoys working with young children and does so by volunteering at the local library and the grammar schools in her district. Ashley participates in the Four Ocean, Ocean Community Cleanup and volunteers at the local courthouse, which helps her gain experience in the field of law. Congratulations to the salutatorian of the class of 2021, Ashley Ganesh. And at number one, the 2021 class valedictorian, Dylan Piggott. Looking at what Dylan has accomplished, I mean, wow, it's truly incredible. The multiple honor societies he is part of and being an AP scholar and earning the AP capstone, capstone diploma is just the tip of the iceberg for Dylan. He's taken pre-college summer courses at Harvard. He's an all-county alto saxophone player, has won awards like the Rensselaer Medal Scholarship Award, the Harvard Club of Boston Foundation Prize Book Award, a two-time recipient of the President's Award for Educational Achievement, won the it was a recipient of the Oyster Bay Colony Award, won the Humani Martin Luther King Humanitarian Award, National PT Reflections Regional Winner, Congressman Woman Rice Certificate of Recognition, Senator Brooks Certificate of Achievement, National History Long Island Region Winner, College Broward National African American Recognition Scholarship, Walt Whitman Poetry Contrast Winner, and on top of that, dozens and dozens of clubs. And looking at what he does after school from athletes helping athletes, being the editor of the newspaper, Key Club, Model UN, playing the saxophone in multiple ensembles, running cross country and track, being on the principal's leadership group. This is all while volunteering to tutor and collect food for food drives, cleaning up Silver Lake and participating in the Sunrise Day Camp Cancer Walk. Where does he find the time? This is what Dylan's teachers say about him. Dylan is a delightful young man with great potential. He has an interest in languages and being that I am influent in Hungarian. He took the initiative to learn a few words and phrases to talk and write to me in my native tongue. Another teacher said, Dylan is a self-motivated student who has a genuine interest in languages and cultures. This is best demonstrated in his self-taught acquisition of languages, such as Gaelic, German, and French. Another teacher said, possibly the only student with whom I can have cultured bandage about music. 
French, Spanish, Hebrew idioms and pronunciations, or the difference between Sofrito, Mirapoi, and the Holy Trinity. Dylan is a unique and first-rate individual who I'll miss dearly. Another teacher said, his natural curiosity and interest in literature and his understanding of its intrinsic value to our development as human beings sets him apart from his peers. His insight and sensitivity to the human condition is evidence in his contribution to class discussions and his well-developed analytical essay responses. Additionally, Dylan writes poetry and has the distinguished honor of having won the Walt Whitman Award for Excellence for one of his poems. As a teacher, I look forward to teaching Dylan's class every day because of his high level enthusiasm and his willingness to approach even the most difficult activities. It has been an honor to teach Dylan and watch the way that he was able to help his entire class grow with their writing and presentation skills. Another teacher said, intelligent beat an understatement, vice president of the National Honor Society, valedictorian of his class, and receiving countless awards, recognizing for his academics, Dylan is not only the type of student that I wish all students should strive to become, but who I believe everyone should strive to be. Lastly, another teacher said, he brings thoughtful ideas to discussions, a helping hand to those struggling, and an overall positive attitude. He is one of the characteristics, this is one of the characteristics I respect about Dylan, is his perseverance to continue to grow and educate himself. Congratulations, Dylan, class of 2021, valedictorian. Thank you, Dr. Testa. I would like to ask all the top 10 to please turn their cameras back on so that our entire community can share in celebrating. Um, if you ever had any doubt about the hope for the future, um, take a look at our top 10. Um, they are an awesome, awesome group of young people, and I am so, so proud of each of them. I hope you will all come back for future classes so that you can share um, your successes in the future. And I just want to um, congratulate all of you. And Moni, I just want to tell you that Dr. Pimple Popper is one of my favorite shows, and I take endless grief at home because of it. Congratulations, top 10. You can't hear everybody, but there is just a tremendous round of applause happening in our community. Congratulations, guys. Next, I'm going to announce our AP scholars. To be an AP scholar requires not only high academic achievement and skill, but over multiple years of school taking AP classes. The Advanced Placement Program is a national standard, and it is an excellent indicator of our students being college and career ready. I'm gonna start with our AP scholars. To become an AP scholar, you had to have scored a three or higher on three or more AP exams. Joshua Anderson, Kaya Badeau, Candice Batances, Anique Boyd, Ronardo Brizias, Jason Isubio, Jalia Evelard, Isaiah Femster, Tess Ferguson, Marcella Figueroa, Zolni Floresca, Kyla Ford, Alyssa Hillian, Katrina Mabiza, Anika Mune, Sarah McKeon, Jada McKee, Maria Jose Moreno Maecha, Andrea Ortiz Escobar, Trey Parkin, Kiara Quamina, Kimberly Raphael, 
Ariana Santiago, Elijah Schneider, Jordan Schneider, Maddox Seeley, Liana Solomon, Sydney Sparks, Richard Spett, Angelique Torres, Monique Williams. Congratulations to all of our AP scholars. Next, we have our AP scholars with honor. To be an AP scholar with honor, you had to have received an average score of at least 3.25 on all AP exams taken and scores of three or higher on four or more of these exams. Our scholars are Ryan Brady, Zara Brima, Kayla Brown, Patrick Castro Bermillo, Sebastian Gavin, Zidane Khan, Pamela Moreira, Matthew Almeida, Grace Salazar, Phoebe Socking, Michelle Sage, and Sophia Smith. Yay, Sophie! Congratulations to all of our AP scholars with honor. Next, our AP scholars with distinction. Students who receive the distinction of AP scholar with distinction have received an average score of at least 3.5 on all AP exams taken and scored a three or higher on five or more of these exams. Moni Sade Adarimi, Sarah Allsafe, Lila Ariste, Sadie Arlen, Kimora Badeau, Courtney Bob, Leilani Clark, Christopher Costello, Brooke DeLuca, Ashley Ganesh, Jack Gerby, Jacob Isaac, Claire McCleary, Danielle Palmer, Dylan Piggott, Jendi Rodriguez, Sakil Ruff, and Rebecca Salmon. Congratulations to our AP scholars with distinction. Next, I'd like to honor our AP Seminar and Research Certificate honorees. These are students who receive scores of three or higher in both AP Seminar and their AP Research Paper. Lila Ariste, Jalia Evelard, Sayana Gibson, Anika Mune, Trey Parker, Kimberly Raphael, Jendi Rodriguez, and Richard Specht. Congratulations to all of our honorees. And lastly, our AP Capstone Diploma recipients. This is granted to students who receive scores of three or higher in AP Seminar and AP Research and on four additional AP exams. Moni Sade Adarimi, Sarah Allsafe, Sadie Arlen, Courtney Bob, Ashley Ganesh, Jacob Isaac, Danielle Palmer, Dylan Piggott, Sakil Ruff, 
Rebecca Salmon and Phoebe Saki. Congratulations to our AP Capstone Diploma recipients. And congratulations to all of our AP scholars. As you can tell from the names that I've read, we have a tremendous amount of AP scholars. And I'm so proud of all of our students in all grades, but especially I wanna congratulate the class of 2021 on an outstanding high school career. Congratulations. And now I'd like to uh, turn it over to our Director of Fine and Performing Arts, Mr. Andre Paprillo. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Dr. Paprillo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tester, for the wonderful lead-in. I want to congratulate all of tonight's honorees for this year's 2021 uh, Board of Education recognition. Tonight, I will be recognizing those being honored in the Fine and Performing Arts Department. Please join me in recognition of Elijah Schneider. He is receiving, uh, they're receiving the Art Supervisor Scholarship Award. Um, <clears throat> Elijah has been the Photography Club president for three years. Elijah is a great singer, has had many acting roles in various productions, and is a general contributor to many aspects of Baldwin Arts. They have been an excellent ambassador of our program in many, many respects. They will be attending the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. Congratulations to Elijah. You just saw um, some of their work at uh, the most recent uh, PBS feature uh, that Dr. Cammy was talking about. Uh, Elijah once again represented Baldwin there. Congratulations, Elijah. Please join me in recognition of Jordan Brand, the recipient of the Go Ape Advanced Placement Art Exhibition Recognition. Jordan will be attending the School of Arts Institute of Chicago. They will be studying drawing and painting and wishes to double major in graphic design and print medium. They received a merit scholarship, which will pay for half of their tuition. Congratulations to Jordan. It's been a great year. Next, please join me in recognition of Zolni Floresca as an all-state music student. Zolni has been recognized in this distinction for the last two years on the saxophone. She is a gifted saxophone player and an excellent clarinet player. She also plays clarinet and bass clarinet in the Long Island Youth Orchestra. She has done excellent work in both of our jazz ensembles and in multiple pit orchestras throughout many productions. She has spent multiple summers in Interlochen in Michigan for the Center for the Arts, and she's heading back to Michigan again, attending Western Michigan University as a music education major this fall. We're very proud of each and every one of these students. Uh, they represent so many of the many wonderful things that are going on there, and I'm proud, again, to recognize these students tonight. Congratulations only, and congratulations to the remainder of the students. At this time, I will be turning the program over to Dr. Kwan, our assistant principal here at Baldwin High School. Good evening, everyone. I get the uh, distinct honor to share with all of you the amazing success that our academy students have had at Baldwin High School. Um, this idea of student choice is alive and well at Baldwin High School, and I'm excited to share with you that not only are upperclassmen um, doing so well with 
their student choice and looking at their careers, but also our underclassmen. So I'd like to share with that with you today. So we're gonna start off with our uh, Business Academy. One of our gems and pride and joy is the Virtual Enterprise Program, which is a national program um, encompassing about 430 schools and about 15,000 students. In our um, first company, Supply, the best of Long Island, delivered, um, has been successful for the past few years. We have this year our CEO, Sydney Sparks, of our company. Um, the company was able to rank in the top 10% in their company branding and the top 10% in the newsletter branding categories. This year, we were also able to introduce a second virtual enterprise company, which is really, um, really says a lot about the fact that students want to have skill-based and student-centered learning. Um, we have our newest company, One World, with our CEO, Sadie Arlen. Their team won the national, um, was a finalist for the national finance competition. So Sadie Arlen, our CEO, Alex Crespo, our finance manager, and Moni Fadi Adarame, our finance specialist. Another aspect of the Business Academy is with our Northwell um, Health Spark Challenge. And we really have a wonderful partnership with Northwell. And even though many people think of the medical field, Northwell also supports our students who have the interest on the business aspects. And so their data analysis team during the Spark Challenge won first place. We have Kwasi Bonzu, who is our 10th grader. Our two other 10th graders, Skylar McCrary and Kayla Carter, Alexis Mason. We have our three 11th graders who are on the team, Daniela McCoy, Mateo Marquez, Chloe Cruz, and our senior, Jendi Rodriguez. And if you see on the slides, you see um, the posters that they also created in, in sending that message about working together and using data in a positive way. For our Fine and Performing Arts Academy, we just wanted to highlight a little bit more uh, Jordan, our senior, um, and Mr. Papillo had already spoken about him. His award was the Award of Excellence, which is one of the top honors. And there were about 200 uh, AP Art and IB students from about 37 Long Island schools who participated. And this really gave an opportunity for Jordan to be able to show his artwork in a professional setting. So congratulations to Jordan. Next, we have our Law Academy. Um, what's wonderful about our Law Academy is our students who won the Medical Marvels competition, which really talked about the impact um, of, of guns and the impact that has on the medical field. So it's not just about, you know, the guns themselves, but what that impact is on the healthcare field. And they really came up with some wonderful ideas and solutions um, as young women um, at Baldwin High School. This, uh, this team is made up of ninth and 10th graders, which is absolutely amazing. And they won first place in the Medical Marvels competition. So we have Talia Contolonion, Raina Palmer, Rochelle Saunders, and Jessica Darcy. They are also working right now um, on really continuing to send this message. Northwell was absolutely, completely impressed with our only fully female team um, participants. And so they are actually working further to help um, in support of this idea of helping with um, just more education about how the impact on the medical, uh, the medical community can be, we can support the medical community a little bit more. And then we have our medical academy. Um, in our medical academy during the Northwell Health Spark Challenge, uh, we had the clinical researcher team win first place. So in this time, um, there were so many challenges in putting these teams together, um, bringing together our remote students, bringing together our hybrid students, and they were able to come together and really compete in multiple categories, which many schools were not able to do, and come out in first place in two. And the second is the clinical researchers. We have our fully senior team, um, Courtney Bob, Destiny Cox, Monique Williams and Kamara Badal. 
So just congratulations to all of you. You continually show how if we give you student choice and our school guides you and supports you in your dreams and what you wanna do, that success is just part of the game. So thank you so much. And now I'd like to reintroduce Dr. Cami, our superintendent of schools for her remarks. Thank you, Dr. Kwan. Um, I, you know, I have to say um, I'm left speechless. I could not be more proud of all of our students, but tonight you get to see those students who have excelled, um, those students who have really um, worked so hard, um, not only in the depth of their studies, but the breadth of their studies. Um, I, I think our program, our Baldwin High School has tremendous, tremendous opportunities for our young people. Um, and the students today, tonight that you saw um, really took advantage of what Baldwin High School has to offer. So um, I am in love with our kids. I think you all know that. Um, and so I want to congratulate them, um, not only in their successes, our ninth through 12th graders, um, but in everything that they have um, ahead of them. Uh, I feel hopeful when I uh, get to hear the accomplishments of our young people. So <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Ms. O'Hagan, I'm going to turn it back over to you and the rest of the Board of Education. Thank you, Dr. Kami. I, I will not repeat everything that you said, although uh, what you said certainly speaks to all of us. Uh, the students, these students that were honored this evening, I, I can't say enough about how proud the board, the staff are of them and their accomplishments. Astonishing. I, I just say to all of these students, you have made the community so proud and we just can't wait to see the accomplishments that you, you uh, have going forward in your lives. This was just wonderful. Okay, I think we'll proceed with the agenda. Uh, the next item on the agenda is comments and reports from the Board of Education. I don't have really very much except to report that um, the other organizations that we belong to as board members have continued their work. So I have attended meetings of the Baldwin Foundation for Education, the School Boards Association, Refit, and of course, uh, there have been a number of budget presentations to the community. Um, and before uh, we move on, uh, I just would also like to say that although this is no longer Teacher Appreciation Week, I think I would be remiss if I didn't uh, give a shout out to our teachers and in fact, all of our staff, um, the students that you saw here this evening uh, would not have been able to accomplish all the things that they accomplished without the guidance and support of our staff. And, this has been such a difficult year, such a challenging year for, uh, for staff and students and that everyone has come through in this way is just really awesome. So I would say congratulations to our teachers and staff as well. Uh, does anyone else have something to add to that? Okay. Um, so again, uh, just this is Mr. Smith. Um, I'm not being lavish on my video, but that's okay. Um, I just wanted to say I've been the uh, the liaison to the Baldwin Teacher Center Advisory Board this year, which has been a great experience to get to know a lot of different teachers and, and administrators across the whole district, and not just <laughs> my little world of uh, Plaza and high school. Um, and then all the one other thing I wanted to mention um, amidst all these wonderful accolades tonight. Um, also wanted to give a shout out to a uh, high school student, Grace Nurestefano. Um, Grace is very involved in writing poetry and she um, wrote poetry for the Long Island Arts Council and for the 11th and 12th grade level, this is uh, island wide. Um, Grace was the first prize winner. Uh, so the Plaza people are real proud of that. So um, that's my report. Thank you very much. It's not just Plaza, she represents all of us. Thank you. 
Okay, the next item on our agenda is the personnel actions report. The Board of Education approves the personnel actions report dated May 12th, 2021, as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. By Mrs. Reed, seconded by Mrs. Pesca. Because it involves the names of individual staff members, we do not discuss it in public. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The Board of Education approves the recommendations for services of the Committee on Special Education, Sub-CSE 504 Committee, and Committee on Preschool Special Education for services in January, February, March, and April 2021, as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Seconded by Mrs. Dureska. The names of individual students, so we do not discuss it in public. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Board of Education approves the home tutoring and special education service reports as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Smith. Again, this involves the names of individual students. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, as board president, I am calling for consideration of a consent agenda for business items one through 23. May I have a motion, please? So moved. By Mrs. Tereska, seconded by Mrs. Reed. Uh, is there any discussion? Does anyone have something they would like to pull out of that list? Uh, yes, Mrs. O'Hagan, um, items one and two, maybe we should mention. Um, can we mention them after they're voted for or do you have some? Oh, after they're voted for is fine. Okay, okay, that's what we'll do then. Uh, could I have a vote please? All those in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Right now, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda, including business items one through 23. So moved. <laughs> by Mrs. Tereska, seconded by Mrs. Reed. Is there any discussion? All those no. in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, as Mrs. Cools pointed out, uh, the first two items uh, that we just approved involved gifts to the district, and we would like to thank uh, the givers of those gifts. The first one is a donation of the of an Arts and Crafts Creative Center by Mr. Jeffrey Bald. We thank him. Uh, it's to be used for the district's art department. And the second one is a donation of $500 from Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Hodge. Uh, and the trust of Madeline Ziegler to be used uh, to extend the Mary Malloy Scholarship Award. So we thank them also very much. I remember Mr. Hodge very fondly. He was a principal at Meadow School. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay. The Board of Education accepts the district guidance plan revised for the 2021-2022 school year as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Cools. Are there any questions? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, <clears throat> the Board of Education accepts the K-12 student discipline code as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Dureska. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The Board of Education accepts the Academic inter Intervention Services Plan as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Dureska. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The Board of Education accepts the Professional Development Plan for the 2021-2022 school year as detailed in the Friday mailing. 
So moved. Moved by Mrs. Dureska. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Reed. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> the Board of Education approves the following resolution. Whereas the Nassau Suffolk School Boards Association has submitted its proposed 2021-2022 budget and proposed 2021-2022 slate of officers and members of the executive committee for the approval of its member boards, the Baldwin Union Free School District Board of Education authorizes the district clerk to record the outcome of the votes and notify Nassau Suffolk School Boards Association of the results. Be it resolved that the Nassau Suffolk School Boards Association proposed budget for the 2021-2022 school year as accepted by, NAS by NISBA's executive committee be and hereby is approved. Be it resolved that the Nassau Suffolk School Boards Association proposed 2021-2022 slate of officers and members of the executive committee as presented by NISBA's nominating committee B and is hereby and hereby is approved. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Smith. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mrs. O'Hagan, I'm just going to interrupt you for one second. I, I just need to know from the board that the the, um, the items that I have on the agenda in front of me from um, two of the last ones that you did, um, the AIS plan is not uh, for the code of conduct. So I need to know from the board um, if you have the same as I do. Sorry, would you repeat that? Yeah. When you look at your agenda, um, the, the original agenda, you might be working from the original agenda that was- It's changed. possible. I apologize if that's the case. Oh, yeah, yes, <laughs> um, in this agenda, but there is a code of conduct. So we need to approve the code of conduct. And I don't know what we do about that AIS plan. Which okay. role are you? Uh, this is a revised agenda you're saying, Dr. Kennedy? I, yeah, I apologize then. I must be using the uh, the original one that I received. I thought I had cross-referenced it, but that's okay. Uh, the, apparently the, not. You all are working off the one that you received in the Friday mailing. Right. The, uh, Roman numeral four, uh, sorry, Roman numeral 13 um, is the code of conduct. Roman numeral 14 is the student discipline code, the K-12 student discipline I see what you're saying. Correct. And 15 is the professional development plan. Those are the, the and, and the guidance plan, but that one is fine. Okay, I have the professional development plan as 16. Okay, so what, what we need to just go back and do is approve the code of conduct. Um, and maybe, Sue, do you have it in front of you? Maybe you can read it because I'm assuming, Ms. O'Hagan, you don't have that one in front of you. The, um, the Code of Conduct Policy 5300 as detailed in the Friday mailing. I do have that in front of me. Please read it then. Thank you, Sue. So. Um, okay. The Board of Ed Action, the Board of Education accepts the Code of Conduct Policy 5300 as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. So moved. So moved. Seconded. Second. Second. Seconded by moved by uh, Mr. Smith and seconded by Mrs. Dereska. Oh, I, I had it different. Okay. I thought it was moved by Mrs. Reed and seconded by Mr. Smith. They both said it at the same time. Yeah, that's why. Yep. Yeah. Uh, however, we want to note it is fine. Paul Okay. Purple. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay. So you approved an AIS plan that is not in here. Um, so okay. I, I just want to make a note of that. Okay, we'll make a note of it in a minute. We can resend the motion. Okay. okay. So uh, do we have to do a vote on that, Mrs. Pratt? Yeah, yes, okay. to resend. Hmm. Okay. Um, I need a motion then to rescind uh, the motion on the academic intervention services plan. So moved. Moved. I'm sorry. Moved by... Mm -hmm. Mrs. Cool. Mrs. Cool, Mrs. cool seconded by Mrs. Reed. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. We took care of the NISBA vote. Uh, and then uh, my next one is the appointment of registrars. Is that correct? I just want to interrupt you. What, did you do the professional development plan? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. 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 So the next one I have is appointment of registrars. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, the Board of Education approved registrars, assistant clerks, and inspectors from a previous list for the budget vote and board election to be held on Tuesday, May 18, 2021, as addended, as detailed in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by, I'm sorry, this Mrs. Reed. Reed. Moved by Mrs. Reed, second. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Dureska. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Okay, Board of Education approves the reorganization meeting to be held on Monday, July 7, 2021. July 7th, right? Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. I have a motion, moved. please. Moved by Mrs. Dureska, seconded by Mrs. Reed. Um, any questions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the Board of Education approves uh, the Board of Education meeting dates for 2021-2022 school year as addended uh, in the Friday mailing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Smith. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the Board of Education has a first read and adopts the following policies and revisions as detailed in the Friday mailing. Policy 8625, student, teacher, and principal data security and privacy. Policy 8635, information security breach and notification. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Smith. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Board of Education has a second read and adopts the following policies and revisions as detailed in the Friday mailing. Policy 0101, gender neutral single occupancy bathrooms. Policy 0105, equity, inclusivity, and diversity in education. Policy 9240, recruiting and hiring. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Smith. <clears throat> Are there any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Um, is there any, I'm at other, is there, <laughs> did I miss anything else? Okay. All right. Um, does anyone have anything under other? Nope. Okay, then I'd just like to read a couple of dates upcoming. Uh, we will be having uh, another budget presentation tomorrow evening for the Baldwin Civic Association at 7 p.m. Uh, the uh, board budget vote and election uh, is scheduled for Tuesday, May 18th uh, at, from 7 to 10 p.m. Uh, please make a note, the voting is at the district office, not at the high school this year. Uh, in recognition of excellence, uh, it will be a virtual meeting on Wednesday, May 26th. Memorial Day, schools will be closed. That is Monday, May 31st. And our next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education is on Wednesday, June 9th. Okay, uh, if there is nothing else, May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. 
seconded by Mrs. Dureska. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is closed at 8.34. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Good night, Good night. Good night. and congratulations to all the Good students. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you.